My name is Charles A. Teal Sr. and I am the retired chief of the Hartford Fire Department in Hartford, Connecticut. Throughout my 28 year career, I was able to acquire three college degrees, received many awards and several promotions in record setting fashion. However, things didn't start out that way. Simply stated, I dropped out of high school when I was 14 years old. It was and still is the worst decision of my life. When I was 17, I had a conversation with my fifth grade gym teacher, Walter Doc Hurley Sr. Most people knew him as Doc Hurley. In just one conversation, he made me aware of how important it was to be of service, to be persistent, and to get an education. Armed with that advice, I set out to become academically and professionally successful. The following information is what I learned from that journey. Welcome to tool number 13 of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. We are at the former Vine Street School in Hartford, Connecticut. It's where I attended school in the fourth grade. I was able to trace my first challenges with math to a specific time and place. When I was nine years old, my health challenges prevented me from going to school for sometimes weeks at a time. After being out for two weeks, I returned to a test on division. Next to the problems were the words, check each answer. When someone tells you to check a division problem, they mean to take the divisor and multiply it times the quotient. If the product you get in your multiplication is identical to the dividend you have in your division problem, then you have the correct answer. However, because I was out sick when this method was taught, I didn't know how to check my answers, so I just put a check mark next to each division problem indicating that I had checked my answer. When I got my paper back, I had all the answers wrong. In addition to that, my teacher wrote in red ink the following words, see me after school, Ms. Mills. I thought I was in big trouble, but when I spoke with my teacher, she recalled that I was out sick when the how to check division problem method was taught. So I sat there with her after school and learned it. Thanks again, Ms. Mills. That experience led to the development of tool number 13. So stand by for more information regarding establishing a solid math foundation. One of the most common mistakes made by math students is trying to learn advanced mathematics without knowing the basics. When I say the basics, I'm referring to addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. If you have learned that x times x equals x squared, but you cannot tell me how much 9 times 7 equals, then when someone asks you how much is 9x times 7x, you will get the more advanced portion of the answer right, but you will still get the elementary portion wrong, just because you don't know your multiplication tables. Because no one will give you partial credit for a partially right answer, you will get the entire question wrong. Like my uncle William Rab Smith once told me, learning advanced math without knowing elementary math is like building a castle in the sky. Also, if you don't know your multiplication tables, I can tell you that you're going to have problems with at least the following kinds of mathematics. Multiplication, division, adding and subtracting fractions, algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. And if you don't know these subjects well, you will have problems with chemistry and physics. Obviously, Learning math is not good enough. You must understand it and then remember it. For some of us, the only way to remember math is to review it, and to review math means to do math, not just read about it or hear about it. Reviewing math by reading about it only shows that you understand what is written. It does not prove that you remember how to solve problems. This means that reviewing math is a psychomotor function which means you are physically solving problems while you are learning, like tool number 11, which involves taking notes. For me, Tuesday is times day. That's when I review my multiplication tables. If you know them, it will only take about five minutes to review. When a person has missed many math classes because of illness or frequently moving 
or that person has not had a math course for a long time, it is as if someone has erased one or more of the steps necessary for a person to read. It is possible to learn how to read without knowing all of these steps, but it is so difficult to do so that you learn to dislike reading, so you don't read frequently enough to become excellent or even good at it. If you are having difficulty with a particular math problem, try these six steps. Relate what you are assigned to learn to something you already know. Money is one way to relate math to what you already know. Most people know how to work with numbers when you talk about dollars and cents. When I was learning right angle trigonometry, I would liken the vertical leg of a triangle to the building. Then I would liken the horizontal leg to the ground. Then I would liken the diagonal side to a ladder. This side is also known as the hypotenuse. Also, try to liken the abstract to the concrete. I liken the words abstract and concrete in the following way. Abstract is something you cannot detect with any of the five senses. And concrete is something that you can detect with any of the five senses. Likening the abstract to the concrete is how we actually learn math. Initially, we were asked questions like, if you had three apples and someone gave you two apples, how many apples would you have? Also, make sure you have mastered the foundational knowledge of your math problem. In other words, make sure you know enough to get an A in addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division before you try to tackle algebra. If you get Bs, it may sound good, but it means you may not understand as much as 20% of the information needed to solve problems at the next level. Those 20% can add up to spell disaster in college. Also, learn, understand, and remember the rules that apply to a math problem. PEMDAS is a rule worth remembering, but what about the meaning of math words and terms? What is the difference between a digit, a number, and a coefficient? The way to ensure that you know these and other definitions is to practice reciting them by creating a personal study guide. We'll have more on that in the next tool. And solving problems to practice what we know. Developing a dependable review system means identifying a problem that tests your ability to remember the rules and definitions necessary to solve that type of problem. The tools of learning cause this type of problem, an ideal problem. You must then solve that problem as frequently as necessary to review those rules and definitions through the use of a personal study guide. A personal study guide is a notebook that has at least one example of each type of problem that is difficult for you to solve. It will help you to remember the general rules necessary to solve that one type of problem. The numbers will change, but the general rules will remain the same. If you cannot remember the rules of the game, you cannot win the game. Once you know the rules, it is easier to apply them to problems with different numbers. A personal study guide will also test your ability to remember essential definitions. It is extremely important to remember that to review math means to do math. Just because you think you are capable of understanding what is written in a book or what your teacher is saying about how to solve a problem by looking at it. It does not mean that you remember how to solve the problem yourself. There's a big difference between doing what you are told to do and knowing what to do on your own. Also, never look at a problem and say, that one is too difficult. I could never find the right answer to that one. You may be surprised to see that you do know how to solve that problem once you try to solve it. Also, be as specific as possible and write down each step necessary to solve a problem. And lastly, utilize free websites that provide tutorials on math. Sometimes watching a video several times without the pressure of a classroom can be most beneficial. However, make sure that it is a site that your teacher recommends. Sometimes it is not good enough to know how to solve a problem you must be able to solve it in the way that your teacher approves. As my old math teacher, Mr. Howard, used to say, there are many roads leading to New York. 
Learn the way your teacher wants you to do so. And of course, if none of these steps work, see tool number six regarding the use of a tutor. Hello, and welcome to tool number 14 of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. We are at the Hartford Fire Department's Training Academy, One Fisher Road in Hartford, Connecticut. It was here that the Tools of Learning had its beginning in June of 1982, while I was a recruit studying to become a firefighter. When preparing for the various quizzes and exams we were assigned to take, I could not help but wonder if I truly remembered the important points that I had studied. I didn't want to wait until I got a test back with a bad grade on it to realize that I didn't know the information well. So I created a Personal Study Guide, or PSG. It is the best way to test yourself when it comes to remembering information. So stand by for more information on tool number 14 of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. Can you solve a particular type of math problem? Do you remember the difference between a noun and a verb? Doing your homework helps you to prove that you can, but usually your homework just asks you to do problems of a particular type. For example, you may solve many division problems for your homework, but how good are you at adding? Have you forgotten the difference between a subject and a predicate? If we don't review, we forget. To determine how good you are at solving many types of problems, take one question from each type of problem you must solve and place it in your personal study guide. After you have answered that type of question, go on to the next one. The problems in your personal study guide may be slightly different from the other problems of the same type that you must solve, but the general rules are the same. Using this method, you will grow accustomed to solving several types of problems in a short period of time, and that's how tests are given. If you are having difficulty with a particular type of problem, place an asterisk next to that problem. Set aside additional time for a review of all the problems with asterisks next to them and review those types of problems more frequently than the others. This method works for math, English, history, and all other subjects as well, particularly definitions. But there's another application for this tool that is beneficial. Sometimes a person will have difficulty passing a particular test that he or she must take. Even after several tries, he or she just can't seem to get a high score enough to pass. When this happens, either of the following is the likely cause. Either the person is not studying, or the person is studying and thinks that he or she is studying the right information for the test, but unfortunately, without realizing it, they're not reviewing the correct information necessary to pass the test. Or the person is studying the right information, but is not remembering what he or she must study in order to pass the test. If you cannot seem to pass a particular type of test and you are given several tries to do so, try highlighting the important information related to that test and create a question for each important fact that you must answer. On the opposite side of the page, write the answer to those questions. If while reviewing the questions, you can answer the question precisely, then you know the answer. If you cannot, then spend additional time committing the information to memory using tools number 14 through 17. Hello, and welcome to tool number 15 of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. We are back at the Hartford Fire Department's Training Academy at One Fisher Road in Hartford, Connecticut. A mnemonic is a memory aid. If you find it difficult to remember something, a mnemonic will help. One of the subjects we had to study while in training was hazardous materials. Within that subject is the term BLEVI, which is an acronym that stands for Boiling Liquid Expanding Vapor Explosion. When I saw this correlation, I thought to myself, why not use a similar system to remember other lists of names? In time, I discovered many acronyms and another form of mnemonic called an acrostic. Sometimes I made up acronyms and acrostics. Words like CLARF started to appear in my vocabulary. CLARF is not a real word, but it is an acronym that I made up, and it stands for the six types of alarm systems, central, local, auxiliary, remote, 
proprietary, and household. These two types of mnemonics proved to be very beneficial during tests, presentations to my superiors, and to the general public. So stand by for more information on tool number 15 of Chief Teal's, The Tools of Learning. Please don't misunderstand this tool. An education is not a bag of tricks. It takes hard work to get an education, which is why people are so happy at their graduations. However, there are ways to remember information that can make remembering some things easier to do. One example is a mnemonic, which is any learning technique that can be used to aid memory. Try this. You can use a mnemonic to remember the number of days there are in the month by using your fist. Start on the knuckle of your index finger, that represents January, which is 31 days. All the other knuckles represent months with 31 days too. The low points of your fist in between the knuckles represent those months with less than 31 days. Low means less. So we will have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And that way we can tell how many days there are in the month using a memory aid. The Tools of Learning recommends the use of two types of mnemonics, acronyms and acrostics. An acronym is a form of mnemonic that is a word made from the first letter of a group of words. There are many examples, but my favorite acronym is the word HOMES. In this word is the first letter of each of the five Great Lakes. The H is for Huron, the O is for Ontario, the M is for Michigan, the E is for Erie, and the S is for Superior. An acrostic is another form of mnemonic. Although there are many kinds of acrostics, the kind we will focus on is making words from the first letter of other words. An example of this type of acrostic is, my very educated mother just served us nachos. Here, the first letter of each word in this sentence represents each of the eight planets of our solar system in the order that they appear from the sun. Using mnemonics like acronyms and acrostics is probably the best way to remember a group of words or phrases. However, it must be remembered that the ultimate goal when it comes to mnemonics is learning and remembering how to create them for our specific needs. The potential use of mnemonics applies to every academic and professional field. To make a mnemonic like an acronym or an acrostic correctly, you must anticipate the question that will be asked of you during the exam. For example, suppose you are asked, what are the names of the planets in our solar system? You could answer in any order you would like. But suppose you are asked, what are the names of the planets in our solar system in their order from the sun? Then you must not only remember the names of the planets, but you must also remember their order. Therefore, constructing the mnemonic must be done with a concern about the order of the letters in mind. Also, be aware of repeat letters, like the letter M, which in this case stands for the planets Mercury and Mars. In a case like this one, you must remember which M stands for which planet. Hello, and welcome to tool number 16 of Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. We are back at Engine Company 1 and Ladder Company 6's quarters at 197 Main Street in Hartford, Connecticut, in the kitchen. As a firefighter, it was necessary for me to learn all the streets in the city of Hartford. Because I was born and raised in this city, I did not expect a problem. But I was assigned to a part of the city that I did not know as well as where I was raised. If I didn't know my streets, my officer wouldn't let me drive the fire truck, and I desperately wanted to do that. So the old timers taught me how to get this done in this very kitchen. I kept a pocket sized notepad with me at all times and used it to practice locating equipment on the fire truck quickly. One of the old timers named Vern Tyson Sr. told me, write the names of the streets on that pad and look at it whenever you have time to do so. Well, that's how this tool got its start and I'm sure you will benefit from tool number 16. Everyone finds themselves with brief periods of time on their hands and nothing to do with it. Some good examples are waiting for the bus or standing in line at the grocery store. 
instead of just waiting, use a pocket-sized notepad or the notes or memo pad application of your smartphone and write the information you find most difficult to remember in it. Take this information out and study it. You will find the more you look at information that is difficult to learn, understand, and remember, the easier it will be to learn, understand, and remember it. Well, that's all from Chief Teal's The Tools of Learning. Remember, never stop hitting the books. Thank you.